welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast. It's time for another NFL season preview, and this time it's a turn of the Cincinnati Bengals. Actually, the first division we've completed. So we've done the Ravens with Shane, we've done the Steelers with both Freddies, and the Browns with uh, Dan. So overall, we've got all four sorted. So Bengals, and of course, if you know our previous episodes, you'll know who's coming. It's Roy Joe Daniels. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Just wait, counting down the days for the season to start. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's um, time of recording. It's July the 11th, but this podcast is out probably late July. So this will be less than a month and a half away, really. Maybe even a month. Um, so we are getting ever so closer. And of course, not many fans in the UK will be as excited as you, Roy. Of course, Bengals are one of the favourites. So, just first of all, how excited are you about Bengal season coming? I know, I know we're talking about them in the episode, but uh, it must be, compared to the likes of maybe 10 years ago, it must be a nice, refreshing change in terms of how you're feeling the start of the year compared to how it was in the Andy Dalton days and, and the time before that. Yeah, absolutely. It's, everything's changed, and the whole ethos, and you can just feel the, the excitement in between between the fans and, and the players as well. Uh, you know, there's that sort of swagger they've got now. We've had a couple of years where we've we've been a contender, and it's it's nice. It feels good. It's different, but yeah, it's looking forward to another season. And now is really the time to kick on and and make the, the rookie contract count and make a big push. You might well go into that now, actually, in terms of the rookie deals you've got. Of course, your team that has, um, I mean, the last few years you made Super Bowl. Two seasons to go, and last season you got all the way to the A for the championship game. And of course, you're in a great window where, of course, not only Joe Burrow but also Jamar Chase were on their rookie deals. Just obviously, I think Joe Burrow's contract is said to be renewed, I think it's 2025, if I'm right in saying that, Rory. Um, so how crucial is it, particularly this year, to go and get at least an Super Bowl appearance and try and make the most of that of that window? Yeah, it's very important. The the, the Burrow contract we're sort of expecting the extension to come at some point this off season if they can get it done. It's coming down the pipeline. Um but yeah, but obviously it'll offset some of the stuff this year. So it'll still be cheap this year. Um even if the contract does get sort of ironed out. But yeah, having him, Chase and Higgins all together, this is the time if we can we've definitely got them probably this season and I would hesitate to say that Higgins we would franchise tag next year. Um, as well, so those three are the key on on the offense and keeping them together. They, that's when you need to push for a Super Bowl. I think defensively, Lou Anarumo is there as a defensive coordinator. He's gonna sort of he likes to he'll run the show, and it's not about the players as such. It's not about the big contracts that side of the ball. He thinks he can scheme up a defense that will, will lead us. So it's keeping the three big guys on the offence and, and some sort of protection in front of Burrow. But yeah, this is a key. This and next year are the key years. I think we've got to make it count. Absolutely. And sticking with Alan Rumo just mentioned him there, and of course, he's been a great figure of the last few years. He's been a really key cog in your team success. I mean, the amount of great change he makes on defence is um is brilliant. And I think that he's been almost, I think, as crucial really as Burrow and um a change really to the to success because of a lot of times, particularly, I think we all look back at the game against the Chiefs where you had that great comeback. I mean, to stop the Chiefs scoring in amongst that run or at many points, I think he deserved a great, a great credit for that. And, you know, we see a lot of teams where they're, they'll lose not only players, but also they'll lose coaches who often go from being the OC or DC to going on to be the head coach. But He's managed to stay, and you know we had that with Eric the Enemy uh, with the Chiefs for many years. He stayed on there, and so for someone like him who's been so highly rated the last few years, and how much of the window we're mentioning just now, um, just how crucial it was as well that Big sure he stays there and he didn't go on to get a job as a head coach. Yeah, it was massive for the Bengals to to keep all the loop. If you listen to people talk about the the scheme, you hear about sort of the Fangio scheme and what what Staley's doing um, with the Chargers and stuff like that. And what you hear from people about Lou's scheme is that he's so adaptable. He, he changes what he's doing to sort of stop the offence from, from functioning. So he has he had plans in place for Mahomes, but those differ from what he'll, he'll do in the divisional game. So he's always thinking 
and the other the beauty of it is that that scheme is so changeable that he's been able to take players who are we're collecting the second wave of free agency, guys who perhaps aren't as expensive or high profile, and plug them into his scheme and he knows how to use them. He maximizes their strengths. So that's that's why he's been massive for us. It's allowed us to, to stay relatively cheap on that side of the ball. I know they invested a lot in free agency in last season because they knew before the Barrow contract they could make a bit of a push on that side of the ball. But this will show whether or not, you know, this year we've got a few cheaper free agents on that side of the ball and a lot of rookies. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if he can produce the same results. I think the, the only thing that's stopping him from going elsewhere really is probably his age. He's slightly older, he's not a fresh face, he's not that sort of exciting new um, mind. But I think I think we were really lucky to hold on to him, really. I think a, a team in the NFL would really benefit from him as a head coach. So, yeah, any time that you get somebody that's a head coach candidate as one of your coordinators is you know, a massive bonus. Yeah, totally agree. Um, speaking of free agents, the main saw sort of free agency ins and outs, so the outs... The most important one being Jesse Bates, Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Von Bell's gone to the Carolina Panthers, as has Hayden Hurst. Um, Trey Flowers has gone to the Falcons as well. Other players such as Samar G. P. Ryan to the Broncos and Brandon Allen to the 49ers. You've re-signed some people such as uh, Michael Thomas, uh, Jermaine Pratt, Drew Sample. And then obviously uh, incomings include the likes of... Um, what's it gone on here? Sorry. Um, incomings include the likes of Orlando Brown Jr., um, Irv Smith Jr., uh, Terrell Basham from the Tennessee Titans, and as well as Trevor Simeon, who will be one of the backups to Joe Barrow. And in the draft itself, to terms of the incomings as well, a player I loved going into the... Um, I think we mentioned it on the mock draft. Uh, Miles Murphy took him 28th overall. DJ Turner was taken the cornerback 60th overall. I'll just name one of the uh, draftee was Jordan Battle, third, uh, third rounder, 95th overall, safety from Alabama. So... Going into the outs, the ins, and the draft, how would you assess the off season additions and departures as a whole for your team? It's it's been mixed. It's always difficult to see a, like a talent like Jesse Bates go, but it was always going to happen. Like we said about the contracts that are coming down the pipeline, it's impossible to keep all your best players. Bates was key to that defense. I mean, he just ran the show from safety. You know, he controlled everything over there. The, the back end um, and he came up with big players um, in big situations so it, he'll be a big miss and then I think Von Bell was a bit surprised for everybody really I think we, we expected to lose Bates but that we'd be able to compete with the Bell contract um, and that he'd stay because he's a big leadership figure for us so I think that was a bit jarring and then that was offset with we've been able to retain Jermaine Pratt on what looks like a relatively friendly contract and um, I could have seen him getting more, really. I expected him to get more on the open market. So to get him and pair him back with Logan Wilson really gives us a strong linebacker group. Um, and then obviously Orlando Brown is the massive, massive one for us. I know Chiefs fans have been a bit bit salty about that and they're sort of writing him off as he's not that good now that he's, he's left them. But for us, yeah, I think he's a massive upgrade. Jonah Williams was a bit of a weak link. He played for a lot of injury, but I think he'll benefit. He's going over to the right-hand side. Brown will come in on the left, and I think I think that'll upgrade that that group. Um, so in terms of that, I think we're, we're pretty happy around there. And then obviously, you're replacing Hayden Hurst with Irv Smith, which I think actually the ceiling of Irv Smith might be a little bit higher than Hayden Hurst. Uh, the potential he's got, he's just never been able to realise it. Injuries, stuff like that. So if he can stay healthy, I think he'll be productive. Um, Burrow likes to use his tight ends. So I can, I can imagine him having a good season if he stays fit. Um, and then the other one, obviously, is is Nick Scott at safety. He's coming in from the Rams. He'll be expecting, hopefully, to take a, a starting spot next to Daxton Hill. But there's a lot of question marks. That's the area that that would be my biggest concern is safety. I mean, Hill didn't get any, barely any reps at safety. He played a little bit corner for us last year. Um, and Scott's coming in as a new addition. And then, like you said, we've got Jordan Battle. He was an interesting one. That's a name to look out for. Third round pick, but I know the Bengals were massively high on him. They were really excited to get him at that point. And then the other draft guys, it's a bit of a foreshadowing draft. That's what I, I put it down as, is that you can see where everybody's going to fit in. Miles Murphy looks like he'll be the, ideally be the Trey Hendrickson. When Hendrickson's contract runs out, Miles Murphy will step up. DJ Turner, step up when a he's due to be a free agent next season. And then Charlie Jones will step in to be 
Tyler Boyd slot replacement. So they're putting the stuff in place, whether or not those guys can realise that potential. But but we're making plans for the future, so you can't argue with that. Yeah, the obvious one is Jesse Bates. I mean, one of the, I think, I definitely one of the more underrated safeties. I think definitely not one that's talked about enough, and I think that he'll be a big addition to, to the Falcons. But obviously, you mentioned, obviously, we still got Michael Thomas, of course. He was re-signed, but all the players you mentioned, just as Scott uh, and the others. And I, I think that, do you think, is that worry for you, the fact that he's going? Because whilst you've got and got some Michael Andrew Brown, who'll be a great protection to Joe Barrow, because we've seen Joe Barrow already go from the most sack callbacks to the sixth most sack callback. And I think with Brown's addition, um, I think we'll see another drop maybe to 10th or 11th. So offensive-wise, I think it's absolutely fine. And even with Lou Anarumo, you know, even with him being such a great uh, defensive schemer and a guy who's able to adapt so quickly and, as you say, adjust... Do you do you think the Bengals will be fine, or does, is there a part of you that worries about not so much regular season? I think that's probably certain you'll make the playoffs, but I think in terms of when it gets to the big games, whether against the um the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game or the Miami Dolphins, do you think that will be a a worry for you when you get come against the big teams in the big games that you won't have someone like a Jesse Bates to to almost bail you out sometimes? Yeah, I think the question marks in the secondary are always going to be a concern and that's what we're going to look for early on in the season is to see how, how those guys settle in just because there's so many new faces like, you know, Dax Hill, Cam Taylor Brick going into his second year. He showed flashes that are really exciting that he's going to be, a, you know, a starting cornerback. But you're asking a lot of a guy going only into his second year to, to hold down one of the outside corner spots. And opposite him, obviously, Awuzie is coming back from quite a serious injury. So, even with a guy that's got so much talent like Awuzie, who's been in the system and has been so effective, is he going to be the same player when he comes back from an injury like that? So, really, right across the board in that second, other than Mike Hilton, who's one of the best sort of slot corners in the league, there is massive question marks, and that'll be the key. Can Lou make the system work around those guys? And um, DJ Turner's in there, but I mean, what do you expect from a rookie corner? So yeah, that's the biggest question mark going into the season. Can the secondary step up? Can Lou find a way of making them competitive? And there probably will be a bit of a bedding in with you know those first few games could be tricky. So hopefully, like you said, by the time we hit the playoffs, I'm hoping that we'll we'll feel more comfortable about it rather than going into the, the playoffs thinking we don't want to face the the top quarterbacks in the AFC. And of course, no um, Eli Apple to, to deal with this year. So that's um, always one positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah, like, bit, bit less chatter when uh, Apple's, now he won't be tweeting as part of the Bengals. It'll be a little bit quieter. Yeah, I think it goes to show that he's, he's not got a team yet. Um, before we go on to win loss tie, um, thoughts on Joe Burrow's new look? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I think he looks pretty. I like the head, the headband he's rocking, um, and the little sort of bangs there. So yeah, no, he's uh, he's he's pretty iconic. I think he's turning into, especially for the, the Bengals fans, and I think for everybody else around the league, he, he winding everybody up a little bit, and that's nice to see from the Bengals because we're always sort of the nice, cuddly ones that sort of you can always beat. You know, there's the plucky Bengals, and now it's a bit like yeah, they're. Uh, we're a bit cool as well, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not his biggest fan, um, but I do like the look. But also, I'm fully aware that if he had gone to the Dolphins in 2020, if we had actually fully properly tanked, um, I think I would have. I would absolutely love him. So, um, yeah, and I think Bengals fans. I think you have to because I think even though Carson Palmer was good, uh, Andy Dalton had his moments. I think Joe Burrow is. I think becoming already. Maybe even the best in franchise history. I mean, there's a uh, boomer of size, and he probably still has that title right now. But I don't think you know it'll be, it'll be give it a few more years and reach a few more AFC Championship games. Then I think that certainly he'll be probably viewed as maybe the best ever Bengal. Yeah, especially if we can get that if we can get that Super Bowl ring, then no question. Um, and that that's what we're hoping for. And like he says, as as long as Joe Burrow's there, you know we've got a chance. The windows are open. No matter uh, how many sort of big time players we've got, you, you you need the quarterback. That's what the NFL is all about. So you know it should be a good as well. Fingers crossed he has a long successful career and will be in the hunt for for many years to come. Fantastic. So we are going to head to the final section, which is going to be win loss tie. Which if you're unaware of it now, 
if you are listening to this podcast, I'll give each fan every game and they've got to answer with win, loss or tie. Now, Rory, you came on the show last season and gave your prediction in, in the same format. Um, so the actual record of the Bengals was 12-4, and four, uh, whereas you had 12-5. and five. So obviously, same actually, same thing happened to Charlie, who was our Bills fan, whereas he had the same amount of wins. But ultimately, because of that game, um, between you and the, yourselves and the Bills being called off, um, that obviously meant that it can't be completely accurate. But I think, again, the same amount of wins. And, you know, certainly, even though Charlie you know, had him losing that game, and they, they did lose it, um, I think, you know, overall, fairly good record. So, yeah, I think there's a few of you that got it pretty much spot on, or if not spot on. So, hopefully this year you can um, do the same thing. Yeah, I know. I remember doing it, and I was I was not... I have made notes this time about where I'm going. I was a bit underprepared last time, so I was like <laughs> doing it on the hoof. Um, but yeah, I think it threw me a bit last year because I'd given you a load of results and we we came unstuck early on in the season. We got piled up a couple of losses early on that were unexpected. So I'm fingers crossed we're uh, we're talking about it a little bit different this year. Well, of course, you mentioned you didn't, didn't prepare much. You still got the same amount of wins, so um, you know, maybe less less preparation is better sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> Perhaps, yeah, maybe maybe now that I've done a little bit of thinking about it, it will go pear shaped. <laughs> uh, actually, before we do do the um the games, of course, you've worked with touchdown for a few years, and you've been to London games through touchdown. I'm hoping to be the same thing this year. Are you planning to go to any any London games this this year? Either whether it's working or whether it's just a fan. Uh, not this year. I've not not arranged it this year. I'm struggling for for time really, just because I'm based in uh in Yorkshire. It's a bit of a trek trek down to London. Um, so we were. I was planning to go down with a few mates, and then I think the price of the tickets and stuff and how difficult it was to get tickets. Um, we never sort of got to it. So we are planning one of those weekends to to sort of all get together and um sit down and watch it right through, you know, get the get the London game in and then go straight into the, the evening game. So that's what we'll probably do instead as a as a group. But yeah, not not this year as much as I've I have i loved doing it and especially when we went and did it for the touchdown. I've really enjoyed sort of reporting on it. So it's uh yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, I think as well, I do feel that because of the name, you know, we've had Josh Allen come this year. Mahomes isn't going to Germany this year. I do think Burrow will eventually, because 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 of him, I and Chase as well. If, uh, I think that will surely result in you playing internationally, whether it's next year or the year after. I think that Burrow, I think the name's too big now to not go international at some point. I mean, can't think. Of, I mean, well, it took Rogers all these years, but most quarterbacks they get to go to international at some point. So, when do you think the Bengals will next be in London? What what's your what's your prediction for that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, from a personal standpoint, I'm hoping in the next couple of years, and I think the Bengals have always, we've been twice now, and so I managed to go to both of those games, one as a fan, and then obviously one with the touchdown. Um, and I think, yeah, the Bengals owners, ownership are quite happy to, to come over, and I think they embrace the, the UK side of it, obviously. Um, Paul, who, who does the Bengals UK stuff, is a fantastic advocate for, for Bengals fans over here and does an amazing job. And I think it's recognised by, by the team in America. They know that there's such a, uh, an avid fan base over here and that, that it's a really good time when they come over here. So I think they'll be open to it and fingers crossed yeah, next year and then I can get down there again because I, I wouldn't miss a Bengals game in London. Absolutely not. Um, right, so let's head to the fixture. So week one, is a road game against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I've got us down for a win there. I think we'll come out of the traps quite quick and, and see off the Browns. Hey, and in week two, your first home game of the season at Pikeville Stadium is a home to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, yeah, I've got I've thrown in a loss there. I'm not I'm not one of these that's gonna go run run the whole thing as, as wins as optimistic as I am. The Ravens, I always think. Jackson early in the year is likely to be healthy and he's always a bit of an X factor. So I think it'd be close, but on his day he's somebody that, that can offer questions that, that we might not have the answers to that early in the year. So he might have a bit of fun against the our secondary while we're in. And next up, the stars of the show so far on our podcast seem to be in every single podcast at the moment, the Los Angeles Rams at home. Yeah, I'm going to give us a win there, just looking at their roster. Obviously, there's still some some talent with Stafford and, and Cook, but the, the defensively, there's a lot of uh, 
unknowns and rookies. And so, yeah, I would expect us to, to beat them. Okay, I mean, I've given my thoughts on the Rams a lot in these podcasts. So if you want to listen to my thoughts on why the Rams could be a wildcard team in the, in the playoffs, find out in the previous episodes and you can find out why I think that. So next up, week four is a road game against Tennessee Titans. Yeah, I think we're going to keep keep the wins rolling in there. Um, it's kind of a nice little run this this section of the season. So I think we can stack up uh, a few wins here. So yeah, I'm going to give us the W against the, the Titans. Hey, and in week five, another road game, but this time against the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, same again. So Cardinals, bit, bit of struggle really for, for them uh, on paper. They look like one of the poorer teams in the NFL. So I think even... Though we've got back to back away away ties there, I think that's a nice little run for us. Rams, Titans, Cardinals, we'd hope for three wins there. And then before your week seven bye, you've got a week six home game against the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I think that'd be close. Seahawks, one of the teams I think will be really good. Um, whether or not Geno can be quite up to the level he was at at the start of last season, I'm not sure. But obviously, they've got a lot of good defensive players and they've, they've picked well in consecutive drafts but I'm going to give us to sneak it um, just with slightly more experience Hey and then week 8 after your bye week is a road game at the San Francisco 49ers I've given us a loss there um, just because I have to throw a few in there not to be fair and I think 49ers are a really good team very good defensively we don't know who's going to be quarterback but obviously going up against that Shanahan scheme is difficult enough for whoever's in it's the sort of whoever's running it. So, yeah, we're going to have to take a, a close loss there on the road. Hey, and then what you know, what could be one of the the previews of the AC Championship game, you could argue. I mean, it's obviously with a game that had a lot of emotion last year uh, at home to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, yeah, I've given us the win there, I think. Yeah, they've given us a win there. Um, it could, yeah, emotionally charged, but I don't think they... I think they might be slightly worse than they were last season. I've just got a feeling that they're maybe not going to be as good. So that's why I've, I've put them over us. Not us, over them. Hey, and then week 10 is a home game against Houston Texans. Uh, yep, I've gone for a win against the Texans. I don't, I don't think they'll quite be as bad as some people have been tagged because um, I quite like CJ Stroud. I think he was a good pick. But I think we should, we're further along than them and, as plucky as they might be, I think we should see them off. Hey, and then week 11 is a road game against a division rival in the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, yes, we've got another win there. I've got a win down for that. Uh, that is that prime time game, is it, I think? It's going to be according to American time, 8.15pm. So that is, yeah, like to be um, 16th. That 16th is going to be... That is a... Thursday night games, that's going to be Thursday night football. Yeah, so I think Barrow is going to change that 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 sort of thing where the Bengals always were terrible in, in prime time and I think Barrow thrives in it, so I think he'll enjoy that and get a, a big win for us against the Ravens. And then week 12 is a home game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, another win. I put us down for a win there. Steelers, still not convinced uh, about Kenny Pickett. So I think, I think we should be able to beat them. And then going into week 13, it's a road game against uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I put us down for a loss there. I think that'd be a really interesting game. Um, that sort of lawrence Burrow battle, I think, going forward. Obviously, we've got mahomes Burrow, and I think uh, herbert Burrow as well. Um, but yeah, I think Lawrence, I think, is, is finally getting the recognition and he's coming to a bit and I think he's going to be really, really good. Um, uh, so I think it'd be a close game and really competitive, but I think they might just edge us on that. I think that makes that Bills-Jags game in London. I mean, for years, we've had the Jags, the home team, where they've been pretty bad. But I think it's um, you know that game probably is the highlight of the three in terms of if take everything into account pound for pound. And I think that you know, you've, you've definitely got two of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league. And I think that you know these two really are are one of the two future quarterbacks of the league since the faces of the of the NFL. Um and of course it's um with Beryl and Lawrence it's back to back number one overall picks as well from 2020 2021. So that's um yeah should be a good game. 
Week 14, we're heading into mid-December now with a home game against the Indianapolis Colts. Yep, got us down for a win there. I'm a little bit worried about that because I'm a big fan of Anthony Richardson. Um, he was probably... I was I was touch and go whether I put him over Bryce Young as my, my QB1, and that's how impressive I thought he was. Whether or not he'll be able to do it consistently in his first year, um, but I think he's going to be a massive... He's got the potential to be huge, just that combination of um, sort of arm talent plus the physical ability. Um, whether or not he's quite at that level this season. Um, but yeah, definitely give me pause for thought. I thought that could be a tricky game at that point in the season, but I'll, I'll put them down for a win. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we mentioned before in the mock draft we did together, where um, you know, being a Florida Gators fan, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Anthony Richardson fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he does well um, in the NFL. But I don't think he'll be really in his first year, maybe even his first two years. I think he'll take a while to settle. Um, week 15, I'm seeing a few of these where they're not actually giving away what date and time the games are for some of these. I'm not sure why, because it's not even there's games since then out before Christmas, so I'm not sure what the reason is for that. But it's a game against a home game against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give us a win there as well. I think the Vikings are another team that might just slip backwards. Uh, I think they had quite a favourable record last year, but they won a lot of close games. I'm not overly convinced about Kirk Cousins. Um, so yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll beat the Vikings comfortably. Hey, okay, and then Christmas Eve, Eve, December twenty third. Uh, at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have us do the double on the Steelers this year. So I think uh, I split the Ravens ties with a one win and one loss. But we're gonna do the double on the Steelers. Nice Christmas present. Ease us into Christmas Day with a bit of early festivities. So yeah, confident about that one. And my goodness, what a game this is next week seventeen. Which actually is perfect for us UK fans. It's nine twenty five PM in the UK, four twenty five PM in the UK on New Year's Eve. I'm sure you'll be having that Astro New Year's Eve sorted. It's against the Chiefs. What a game to have on this time of year. Yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect timing. Get a nice little little party, a little bit of a watch going on. You know, it's just a nice way to start your New Year's Eve. Um I can't put as as much as I have respect for the Chiefs. My pride can't let me let me put a, a loss down there. I, I can't let that fan base have that over us. So I've got to be confident and say we're going to beat them because the rivalry now is getting heated. It's out there on, on Twitter. There's a lot of back and forth. So I don't want to lose face and, and not show confidence in my team, but it's going to be really close. That one. Hopefully for everybody else, it's a neutral. It's just going to be like, you know, a game of fireworks, you know, let's see their own and the homes go off. Um, going into into New Year, but yeah, let's let's have us edge it. Yeah, I mean that for me, I think that is the game now. I think that these teams are going to be. I think the Bills. I think you, you make a point that maybe their window might be over, but I think the Bengals and the Bengals and the Chiefs. I I think these are two teams that are going to be batting it for years, and I I'll be very shocked if it's not one of these two teams winning the AFC this year. I mean, the whole day itself is pretty insane. I mean, you've got um. Obviously, you got day, the the morning of New Year's Eve, so one one in the morning, you've got Lions at the Cowboys. Then you've got a full slate of games on New Year's Eve. So, I mean, I'm not the biggest New Year's Eve fan, especially since COVID happens. I don't, I don't think I'm that eager to go out. But if I do go out, I meant to rethink this because you've got literally the whole red zone NFL Sunday on New Year's Eve. So you've got some great games. I mean, we're playing, obviously, as all the teams play Baltimore Ravens. You've got Steelers, uh, St- uh, the Seahawks. You've got Chargers, Broncos, Vikings, Packers, um, uh, 49ers, Commanders, Panthers, Jags. It's it's a great day, and I think that's um, NFL fans' dream. And I think that I might have to um, either not go out or force my friends to watch it whilst <laughs> whilst before going out. I'll put it on my friends' TV. But um, yeah, it should should be a good day. Yeah, no, it looks sounds sounds brilliant. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I'll be. I think I'll get. Get myself set up in front of the TV and get a couple of mates around, and uh, it sounds sounds pretty good, really. Just sort of vegging out to the uh, to the NFL all day. Brilliant, and then finally, week eighteen for the first time in years, I've got NFL Sunday on my birthday. What a time to have it! Um, is a game at home against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I'm gonna give us the loss there just to split it with the Browns, um, and it just makes it look like I'm not being overly optimistic. So yeah, I've put us down for an L there. 
rounds, but they always seem to have something over us. They always seem to be able to pull one out of the bag. So perhaps maybe at that point we've got the playoff place wrapped up. It doesn't mean too much if we're not in. Maybe we're not going for home field. That might be there. Um, we might rest a few players or stuff like that. So yeah, I'll give the Browns that one. Okay, so that means that your total bet record prediction is a thirteen and four record. So yeah, that that sounds that sounds right to me really because I feel we're like slightly better than we were last year. So just one game extra that seems about right. So that means that according to our current, you are. 11th person to come on the podcast for our 10th team we've had so far on these season predictions. And you are now our joint second most optimistic fan. Uh, level with Charlie, uh, our Bills fan, Charlie Nelson, both having a 13-4 record. Just behind you is the likes of Shane Harris, our Baltimore Ravens fan, with 11-5-1, and Javan Bieler with the Seattle Seahawks finishing 11-6. and six. But still leading the way with the most optimistic fan at the moment is Paul Hope, who was on our 49ers episode. So, yeah. Definitely one of the things, and of course then we've got the likes of Ollie Kent and Sam Morgan, who are right at the bottom, two very depressed Arizona Cardinals fan with a five and six wins. <laughs> so yeah, no, that sounds about right. They they sound like they might have a tough season, so I hope that I, I quite like the Cardinals. Well I've got a little, when I went home to America, they were the team that um we were staying in Arizona. So I have been to an Arizona game, so I do always keep my eye on there as well. So I love them. Fantastic. But so that is where we're going to end the podcast for this week. So first of all, thank you once again, Roy, for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I always enjoy it. No problem at all. Always a pleasure having you on. Um, of course, people who haven't yet seen your Twitter account, um, obviously do check it out. Where can they find you and what can we look forward to in the next few weeks on your social media page? Yeah, so it's I think it's RJ Daniels NFL on Twitter. And at the minute... We are, if you Bengals related, um, I write for Stripe Hype. So we've got plenty of stuff coming out there, going into training camp and, and things like that. So there'll be a few articles on Bengals side of things from that. And then in terms of the touchdown, um, sort of heading up the, the college stuff. So you'll start getting season previews um, and sort of a closer look at some of the draft guys. I like to do summer scouting. So We'll get some top five lists out there um, at each position and, and give everybody an early intro into the, the people to watch once the college season comes out. Great, sir. So do check that out if you haven't already. But in the meantime, this has been the Across the Pod NFL podcast as part of the Eurotrips Network with our Cincinnati Bengals season preview. I've been Andy. This has been Rory Joe. And we will see you guys for our next season preview.